the Department of Science and Technology has partnered with what is one of India's largest startup incubators, the Tea Hub at Hyderabad, in order to give a boost to machine learning, artificial intelligence technology. And I have with me the Tea Hub CEO, Mr. Srinivas Rao, and also the CEO of what is being called as Math, Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence Technology. First of all, uh, locating it here, obviously these are technologies of the future, and we are looking at it as something that's going to be globally competitive. The idea of locating it here would be what? So the idea is, so obviously, we, you know, we've all been using AI. So think about Google Maps, think about the Uber or Ola we've already been using. And obviously in the last one or two years, uh, thanks to OpenAI, ChatGPT, AI has become mainstream. Right? And today we see far-reaching opportunities in AI to accelerate technology, to accelerate economic progress, etc. in a variety of sectors, be it education, be it healthcare, be it manufacturing, and so on. Right? So we felt that there's a tremendous opportunity here to create an AI hub okay, where we can provide startups and the entire ecosystem access to the resources to build out, I think there is directions from the government both at the center and at the state that uh, we should focus on building out AI capability so that we don't miss out on this boat, we don't miss out on this race and this initiative is a step in that direction. So there is going to be no uh sector that is going to be untouched by AI and ML, uh, transformative certainly it is going to be. What specifically are you bringing here uh, to perhaps graduates who are now coming out saying that we have some AI uh, uh, skills, ML skills, what are they going to be getting at the center? So at the center definitely we have created a lot of, uh, we have a lot of startups today in our ecosystem, already 2000 plus startups within our ecosystem which are working in and around AI. We have 60 plus startups in the physical premises here and more we will onboard virtually. So we are also engaging with the student community and for them we have launched our LMS platform which is helping them to learn the AI skills and also the first of its kind AI job portal in the country which is purely focusing on AI jobs. So where not only today our startups are posting the jobs, but in next couple of weeks you will see all, we'll try to get as many AI jobs from all the corporate startups across the country. And that is a big boost and big motivation and big support for the student fraternity who are just passing out and trying to jump into this uh, AI uh, cycle. The NASCOM obviously says there's a huge gap between the skill available and the demand that's going to be there in the market. Right. You are not a training agency. But you're saying you are uh, bringing them all together so that you can match the skills with the demand in the market? That's absolutely. That's first what we are doing is that we have built this platform to bring the training agencies and the student fraternity so that they can learn the courses. And it is not just for student, also for startup and corporate employees who are working in some different areas and they can upskill to AI technologies and all this thing. So that is the scaling part. Second is the job part and we are making this you know, marriage happen and where uh, people are getting trained and they are getting uh, absorbed by the startups or corporates. So definitely agreed. We also understood that gap. There is a huge gap in terms of jobs. People are saying that AI might take away jobs. My say is always that there is a huge job. We just have to address that. And our initiative uh, with T Hub, with DST, is that we try to bridge that gap so that you know the people can get trained and get these jobs. Technologies like AI and ML, very obviously, it's the young who are leading this uh, field. What happens to the entrepreneurs who are probably 40 plus who would not have learnt it in their colleges and so on? Uh, he spoke about bringing both skills together and then only the innovation can actually happen. What role does TIHA play? No, I think uh, first of all, uh, in today's time and age, technology even, even outside of AI is changing rapidly. So all entrepreneurs have to be nimble, have to be adaptive. So for example, we all talked about digital transformation. It's disrupting industries. Similarly, AI will disrupt. So I guess to some extent all businesses will have to adapt to the changing reality and market forces will compel you. You cannot, you know, uh, I don't think first of all there is a limit to what you can learn and uh, age should not be a, a barrier. As long as you are keen to learn, uh, there is so much content available, there is so much exposure, etc. So I think businesses will adapt and we are seeing evidence of that across the board in all industries whether it be in banking, whether it be in healthcare. In fact, it... you know, when you hear about it, many people say all firms want to get into AI. And yet, they are very cautious as well. They don't want to jump into it. Obviously, we don't know what we are getting into. What is really the reality? 
No, no, so I think what we are seeing, so for example, we do a large number of corporate engagements at T-Hub, as you know. We have more than 30 plus programs right now with large corporates we are working with. Many of them are starting to look very seriously at how this can impact their business. It can, for example, how do I create hyper-personalization, for example. How do I do better demand forecasting? How do I optimize my supply chain, as an example, right? So they're all looking at it. Uh, all of them are right now trying to figure out the ROI uh, sort of thing on all of these. It's just a question of time. And like in any technology, there'll always be what you call the early adopters, people who get in at the early stage of the curve, and possibly to some extent, they are, the they, they are both at the cutting edge and also at the bleeding edge of technology. That will happen. But many of these solutions will start becoming mainstream in the next 12 to 18 months. Just one final question. We are in a mega election year and world over we are seeing AI being used by for political campaigns, by firms and all that. Do we actually have a framework within which all this can operate? We saw what happened with Mid Journey and Indonesia, uh, cases that came up. Do we have a framework? Any of you wants it? So currently, like uh, you might have seen the initiative of the advisory that METI has given. So everybody is trying, even our local bodies, government, everybody is trying to put a framework. It's too early to say there is a fixed framework because even today we don't, uh, we are also not aware and people are also not aware about the possibilities, what AI can do. So everybody is trying to bring together a joint initiative in terms of this advisory is one such initiative. And uh, that is how we should go towards it. I think that is the right way of approaching it. We can't say no to technology, this is a one-way road. Yeah. No, so I think uh, as long as it is seen as a force for good, uh, there may be some negative consequences, bad actors, but I think like everything else in technology, if you go back over the last 500 years, printing press, steam engine, aeroplane, automobile, there have been consequences, but in the long run, all of these will play out for good. Thank you so much, Mr. Srinivas and Mr. Rahul Peth. So, uh, exciting times here with uh, AI and ML, how to harness them and uh, use those technologies to help the uh, innovators to become entrepreneurs and also put India on the global stage. In Hyderabad with camera person Nagaraju Umasudhir, NDTV.